Hey guys, how's it going? Doing a little evening project here right before Christmas. It's Christmas Eve actually. And uh, in the process of changing the intake on this 383 that's in this Plymouth Fury, the 68 Fury. It's been dormant in the garage for a couple of years now. And uh, this engine was all together. And so according to plan, I took it apart partially to do something. But the reason behind that is that this this had a it had a thermoquad and a thermoquad intake on this 383 and that's not what this car would have came with it's not original it came with a uh, Carter um, AVS carb four barrel carburetor and uh, the matching intake and of course those two intakes you can't interchange those you know you can't put one carb on the other without a uh, an adapter so I sourced the right intake for it and the correct carburetor and the whole shebang. So I uh, just pulled that off and cleaned everything up and got it ready to go back on. I'm still working on the carburetor because it's uh, had to do some modifications to that, but that's another video for another time. So here's what's going on. Um, this engine, of course you got an intake that'll be on the top of it, but it uses what's called a kind of a, they call it a turkey tray seals this valley pan off to show you what that looks like it's just simply a sheet metal pressing and to install this guy you just uh, clean everything up like I did and you've got uh, a rear rail front rail here you see they've got holes in them for bolts there's three bolts in the rear three in the front at the rear you've got a small strip that holds it down for bolts at the front you've got a, another small strip and also a little sheet metal plate right there that fits down over that and that seals that that's what seals that uh, the crankcast valley lifter valley from the outside and then the intake on these you'll notice is a dry intake it doesn't carry water so um, sometimes I guess it can be touchy to get these to seal but that's a good thing that it doesn't carry water that way if it doesn't seal all the way you're not in introducing water into the engine accidentally so so that's what I'm doing I've cleaned everything up and the inside of this engine is nearly spotless so I don't think this engine has very many miles on it so I'm glad to see that uh, and anticipated it been rebuilt of course the way it looked on the outside so I'm about to do that put that all back together just kind of a cut and dried procedure what you're going to do when you go to put that tray in, first thing you're going to do is you're going to put a strip of RTV along the back and up the sides a little bit. And same up here. You guys have changed intake manifolds, you know all about that. So, And I'm not going to bother with any around the ports. Like I said, if it leaks, it's not a big deal to take it back off. You don't have to pull the tray back off. You just pull the intake. So hopefully. <laughs> But we will uh, cross that bridge if we get to it. So in the meantime, I'm going to clean some more bolts up and uh, get that ready to go back on. And yeah, so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I'm going to go ahead and take some oil and drizzle on that camshaft because it's been sitting a good while and all the oil's drained back off of it. So I'm going to do that. And of course, I'm going to change the oil anyway before I try to crank this thing up for the first time. So. I'm going to do that now. So, uh, I'll come back in a little bit. See you then. Camshaft and lifters oiled. RTV applied. Just like that. That's what you do. Okay. Next. Okay then. I have uh, dropped this valley pan into place and I've bolted it down with a Retainers that I told you about. This is what it looks like after it's in. Strip up here, big plate on the front. Strip back there by itself. Now there might have been a plate originally back there. I don't know. I didn't see one, so I don't have one. So what you want to see after you get all this tightened down, and you don't have to torque the crap out of these bolts because they're only seven sixteen inch bolts, and this will not focus. There you go. Uh, just do it wrist tight. That's what I say. You should see. A good even bead coming out from under that. Same on the back. I can't see back under there. I don't have a mirror. So I'm going to cross my fingers 
that it does not leak. I've not ever had one of those leak yet. Hope I don't knock on wood. So, because that's one of the worst feelings is to get an engine started and running, and then you see oil coming out of the back of it there. So, so next step is just to go ahead and get the intake, that big old heavy cast iron intake, and just drop it on there and torque it down, and uh, I'll get those torque figures for you. And that's gonna be it. We'll be done. It's a pretty simple swap there. Now it's up to you. If you want to, if you feel more comfortable using some, some kind of a, I don't recommend it, but if you were to use some kind of sealer, you know, you can maybe use that uh, Indian head shellac maybe around those ports if you just want to. But the only problem with that is, is that that stuff is murder to get back off once you start to take things apart again. So. You, I would, and you don't want to use like orange or blue or stuff like that because that will degrade any kind of exposure to oil. Well, not oil, but gas. It's fine with oil, but gas it will degrade it, so it lead it up, so it won't last, and you'll have a leak. So the intention from Mopar was that this metal tray makes the seal. That's why it's embossed like it is. So I would suggest just to go ahead and try to use this as is the way it was designed. That's just my personal opinion. Now, that said, you can get aftermarket gaskets that are more like if you've been working on a Chevy or a Ford, what you're used to is it's got a strip on that side and a strip on this side and then it's got some piece that goes in the middle. It's like three separate pieces, I think. And I don't I guess it works better. I don't know. I've never have used one. I don't know what my brother's using on his dart. I need to ask him. See what his uh, secrets to success are on this. But anyway, we're working towards getting this thing fired up because we've had an unseasonably warm winter so far. As I said, this is Christmas Eve and it's Christmas Eve and it's like in the 70s. And am I complaining? No. So. And along with warmer temperatures comes dogs barking, more traffic, and of course there's been a couple lawnmowers running. You know, the, the residents, they're like robots. They're like the, you know how the insects automatically come out when the temperature gets warmer? Well, the residents are the same way with their lawnmowers. When the temperature gets a certain level, they have to come out with their lawnmowers and their leaf blowers. It's just, it's, it's genetic. It's the genetic disposition of the resident. Okay, well, I can talk as long as I want to, but it's not getting the intake put back on, so let me get at it. See you then. And also, don't forget when you put this intake on that the negative battery cable goes under that bolt right there. So, meaning you put the intake on and then you put the cable and then the bolt through it, not before. <laughs> so, all right, guys, see ya. <laughs> Well, my OCDC <laughs> wouldn't permit me to continue further without doing this. I had to drag out my can of Mopar Blue paint and uh, paint that valley pan so it didn't look just like there's a new valley pan on there. That's, most of that's going to be hidden by the intake, so I left the end of it kind of unpainted. So <laughs> Anyway, this engine, I don't think this engine's painted the right color anyway because this is supposed to be... This engine is supposed to be turquoise. It's a different shade. That's corporate blue, which all the engines like 71 up are painted corporate blue. I know there's been a lot of... There's certain things that men will argue about and besides paint colors on certain things, one different ones are oil, oil filters, uh, charging systems, and uh, fans and water pumps and things like that so anyway whole litany of argumentative things you can argue about I guess you could say but anyway that's that's gonna be corporate blue for right now and I may come back and uh, as hopefully this this car progresses along I'll come back and uh, paint the whole engine the right color again you know I've done that before on a that truck I think it was and Uncle Phil's car so Okay, so I'll show you that later.
Okay, well, hopefully as you saw there, I was torquing this intake down. And this light's always dimmer on the camera than it is looking through the viewfinder, so I don't know how well you can really see any of this, but uh, it's on and torqued down. That is a heavy intake. So it's a uh, spec is between 40 and 45 foot pounds of torque. So I just snugged them all down going around and then start back over here torquing them with the torque wrench. And once I run it at least a couple three times for a little bit, I'm going to go back and torque them again. So, so that hopefully will do it. Now it's just a matter of putting on the, uh, whatever the word is, accoutrement. Uh, get the carburetor finished up and get it back on and I've got to buy a choke for it which is the unit that mounts down in there and of course when you get into the cars and stuff this old sorry I'm wiping my face on my sleeve here my nose is itching but when you get into cars this old you have to sometimes source parts that are not common anymore of course that choke unit that fits in there that is like a two or three year only choke unit and one off anything else won't fit so I've got to order that that's about fifty nine dollars for a reproduction and then it should be a matter of just getting everything put back together and getting it running I am gonna buy another the right fuel line for it the metal line that comes up because it's got a piece of a rubber line over there somewhere and I don't want to use that it just looks tacky I'm not talking about that that's a PCV but uh, yeah, and that ought to get us further, I was thinking of the gospel song, further along. Uh, that should get us far enough along that we can pull this thing out of this garage here, this crypt it's been in, and get down here and get a hot battery on it and get fuel to it and see if we can get it to run. I hope it will. So, you know, I was working on this intake and it reminded me of something else. One of the persons that... Uh, I met on YouTube just looking at his videos. Uh, he's got a 55 or 56 Cadillac. He's been having a lot of intake trouble with it, and I think he had to finally change his intake to a single carb intake. And uh, I don't participate much on his channel. And that's, you know, I don't mean this as a case of sour grapes. I'm, I don't have any grudge against anybody on YouTube or anything of that sort. I don't carry grudges like that or whatever you want to call them, uh, sour grapes, I don't know. But uh, I just de started deciding to not participate much because that uh, he had contacted me privately and uh, with a nice email, very polite, nice, friendly email, and wanted me to try to refer people to his channel, and he would do the same. So that's all fine and good uh, I don't mind that necessarily but uh, the thing is you know he I, I kind of watched after that a little while and you know he he would come to my channel and make a comment here and there but he never really participated in my channel and never seemed to I think I forgot to do something I sure did I forgot to bolt the kick down now dang it we'll do that but or the throttle rod, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, he, he just kind of didn't seem too awful uh, appreciative of anything I had to say on his channel. And that, like I said, combined with, you know, not being very interactive on my own channel, you know, so, well, I just, you know, I don't look. I don't, I don't mind if somebody wants me to try to help them get views and subscriptions. But just say that. Just say, just say hey, I'd like you to help me get some views and subscriptions. You know, don't act like you're going to be friendly and come around, hang out and stuff like that with a real nice, well-polished email. I don't, I don't go for that. That's just fake to me. And, and I'm, I'm real, uh, you know, I've, I've known how to fake people out in the past myself, so I'm, I can identify it when I see it. So, but anyway, wish him all the best. He seems like a nice enough guy, but. Uh, and you know, here's the thing that's also sort of intriguing about YouTube is I notice that my views mainly, unless it's something that's really kind of uh, 
specific type of a video like carburetor mixture screws or choke adjustment or something like that that there's really no other good video on that my video views will kind of what I call plane out they level off after a while you know I get a few hundred views and that's about it and I've noticed that with other people like RP his video he's been on here doing video after video after video and uh, you know his views just kind of level off you know and you know I've noticed that it's it's, it's intriguing because the people that do videos that like he and I that usually show a lot of things being done and a lot of work being done and stuff like that they don't get that many views but yet people that do video channels that they do a lot of presentation you know they do polished videos and and they talk a lot about what they're doing and they just don't really do much though it's just a lot more description and a lot of more you know it's what I call kind of fluff you know you never really see them getting their hands dirty you never really see a process being done you know these folks man they can get all kinds of views and they do shorter videos and like I said again that's not any kind of sour grapes but it's just they've done studies on that on how to get the most views on YouTube and uh, you know they tell you don't make your videos too long and I think I don't remember him saying about detail but obviously you don't need to go into a lot of detail because it comes down to a simple comes down to a simple fact that people just don't have the attention span to sit through videos so that's why that all these people that can you know that, that, that want to produce these videos that are just kinda flashy and you know hey here's what's going on and I'm doing, gonna do this I'm gonna do that and then, and oh well we're gonna stop here for today tune in again next time you know they get all these views and it's like you know I'm thinking to myself what did you really get out of that you know so I guess that's the same reason people watch TV you know episodes of TV it's like well we got part of it today this week we'll tune in again next week and we'll get a little bit more of it wow so I don't know. Maybe the others of us are doing it wrong by doing complete videos. I have no idea. But anyway, but anyway, I appreciate all y'all, and and I'm glad for everybody that's able to do videos on YouTube, and you know everybody contributes their own type of thing. So happy for everybody. So okay then. You know what's funny about this intake? This intake was totally red before I got it in there, and I. Uh, scraped and scraped and scraped and worked it over and now it mostly matches the rest of the engine except for that little bit of nice neat blue there <laughs> alright guys we'll see you have a good one more on this later